So it's kind of worth knowing where integration by parts comes from. Um, so it actually comes from the product loop, which is kind of interesting. So you probably remember that we have this product tool that says if you take the derivative of f times g, it's the derivative of f times the not derivative of g plus f times the derivative of g. Well, we're going to write this slightly differently just to make it a little bit more like how the pro the integration of parts looks like. So let's instead of f and g, let's write it as u and z, which are the worst letters we can use because they look so similar, but that's what we've got. And if we take the derivative of this, it's going to be instead of writing u prime, I'm going to write du. So like the derivative of u times v plus u times the derivative. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to integrate both sides. So I think the integral plus u of the derivative of u times v is going to equal the integral of du times v plus the integral of u times dv. So here's the thing. This is kind of an important fact about calculus, right? When you take the integral of the derivative, you're just undoing that. So the integral of the derivative of u times v is just u times v. And we're going to rewrite the right-hand side just a little bit. That's going to be, I'm going to just change the order here. That's going to be the integral of v du plus the integral of u dv. And now I'm going to isolate this term here so that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus that over there. So the integral of u dv is equal to this minus this. And that is our integration by parts rule. The idea is that we're going to start with something like the integral of u dv, which is going to be challenging. We're going to rewrite it as u times v minus the integral of v du. And the hope is that the integral of v du is supposed to be easier to deal with. So this part right here is challenging. This part right here is hopefully easier. Welcome. Thank you. Just talking about integration by parts and how it comes from the product rule. Um, the other thing to point out, well, a couple things. One, um, typically we only use integration by parts on what I typically refer to as a mixture problem. Meaning you've got a mixture of different types of functions. Typically, the list of different types of functions are logarithmic, trigonometric, exponential, or algebraic. So something like the integral of x e to the x. That's a mixture problem where you have a mixture of x to a power and an exponential function or the integral of x times natural log of x, or the integral of x times cosine of x, where we make x squared, or the integral of e to the x times sine of x. Oops, can't quite see that. All these are examples of mixtures in that you have a mixture of types of functions, algebraic and exponential, algebraic and logarithmic, algebraic and trig, exponential and trig. So the other thing to remember, in addition to these, these are the types of integrals that we use it on, you really should first check to see if you can do u substitution. So for example, if I was going to try and integrate the x times e to the x squared, I might start off by thinking, oh, that looks like I could do integration by parts. But before I do, because there's a mixture, right? It's definitely an algebraic thing, or like I would say any power of x times an exponential thing. But before I think of integration by parts, I should first try, well, this is a mixture. And I should first attempt a use of. 
one, because it'll work sometimes. And two, because usually we think of U sub as being easier. Most of the time, U sub works or enrichment parts work and they don't both work. There are rare exceptions, but you should definitely try U sub first. And here U sub actually does work. If we let U equal E to the, uh, sorry, not E to the X squared. I mean, you could pick that, but it's usually a better choice to let U equal X squared. Then our DU is gonna be two X DX and one half DU equals X DX. So this one, integral of X E to the X squared DX becomes the integral of, well, let's see, X DX is one half DU and then E to the X squared is E to the U. So that becomes just one half E to the U plus C which is then one half e to the x squared plus c. So if you have a mixture, you definitely want to try u substitution before you jump to integration by plus. Well, let's look at another example. Let's go ahead and look at something like the integral x e to the x. Let's make it x e to the two x. So here, a u sub really wouldn't get us anywhere. You could try letting u equal 2x, but that's not really going to help. It's going to just essentially still have u times e to the u or x times e to the x. So, right, if I try to u sub, you should still think about trying to u sub. u equal to 2x, du equal to 2dx. I'm still going to have an x there, right? So I could rewrite it, but it's essentially going to be the integral of u over 2 e to the u du, which is essentially the same. So we're thinking, okay, it's probably not gonna be U sub. We probably need to try any rich by parts. So when you're doing any rich by parts, there's a couple ways of thinking about what you wanna pick for what. And there's a lot of words to say here. So the way we pick U, you want to pick U so that when you take its derivative, it gets simpler. So of the two choices here, u equal to x or u equal to e to the 2x. If u equals x, its derivative is 1, which is simpler. If u equals e to the 2x, its derivative is e to the 2x times 2, which is essentially the same. It didn't really get simpler. So we should definitely pick u equal to x here because it gets simpler when we differentiate it. We're also going to pick dv, well, dv should always be the rest, but dv should be something that when you anti-differentiate it, it's relatively easy to anti-differentiate. So usually we say dv should be kind of the most complicated thing you can pick that's still easy to anti-differentiate. So we're gonna pick dv to be e to the 2x dx because its anti-derivative is relatively easy straightforward is probably a better way to say that. So we want to pick u to be something that gets simpler when we differentiate it. We want to pick dv to be the rest. That's not terrible to anti-differentiate. And then, well, yeah, and then we're going to throw in, into the formula. Um, so our u is x, our du is 1 times dx, our dv is e to the 2x dx, and our v, which is the antiderivative of that, is one half e to the two x. And then all of that gets thrown into the formula. The integral of x e to the two x dx is equal to, well, here's the way I remember it. It's ultraviolet super voodoo. Let me say that again, ultraviolet super voodoo. It's uv ultraviolet minus the integral of vdu super voodoo. I'll write it out, don't worry. So I'm gonna have my uv, so it's gonna be x times one half e to the two x. That's my u v, my ultra violet. Minus the integral of v du. So one half e to the two x times du to the x. So there's my v. That's my VU, let's write it as VOO. And then my, here's my DU, which is my voodoo. And then it's super. 
So that's an acronym, or, or not maybe like a, a way I remember how, what the formula is, ultraviolet super voodoo. You do not have to use that, but I find it convenient. Question. Um, I was watching a YouTube video today, and the formula was different. It was kind of a different one. It was UV minus the integral of V EQ. That's what I wrote. Right? Like, I think that's what I wrote, didn't yeah, it? It is. I think I should have to use it like that. So, so when you're writing the formula, it is uv minus the integral of v du, but you're, you're writing in what we have said u and v and dv and, and v, v and du are equal to. So I'm actually not going to write uv minus the integral of v du. I'm going to write what u is equal to times what v is equal to minus the integral of what v is equal to times du. And then the hope, and the hope is true here, the hope is that this thing is easier to anti-differentiate than the previous thing, and it is. So this is going to end up equaling, well, let's see, I've got x times 1 half e to the 2x minus the integral of 1 half e to the 2x is 1 half times another 1 half e to the 2x. So it's going to be 1 fourth e to the 2x plus c. And that's our result. Questions about this. Okay. So let's do some more examples. So let's look at, so this is where I should say, this is where things start getting more challenging in my opinion, because we start having integrals and we're like, well, here's an integral. What method should you use? And you kind of have to sometimes guess the wrong thing first before you do the right thing. So let's look at this next one the integral of one over x times the natural log of x squared. So here, I see a mixture. I've got a logarithm and a power of x. And first, I'm going to try a u sub. I'm going to try letting u equal the natural log of x. And if I try that, my du is going to be, well, the derivative of the natural log of x is one over x dx. And I do have a one over x dx, so it looks like this is going to work. So this is going to become the integral of, well, let's see, one over x dx is my du, and then I'm left with a one over u squared. Or I would prefer to write that as the integral of u to the negative two du. Using my anti-power rule, I'm going to get u to the minus one over minus one plus c, which is then going to equal the natural log of x to the minus one over minus one plus c, which I would probably rewrite as negative one over natural log of x. So I really can't stress enough. You definitely want to try a use of before you jump to enrich my parts. Let's look at another problem. Let's look at the integral x squared times the natural log of x dx. So here, I'm. If I was going to try a u sub, mm, I might. If right, so here it doesn't just doesn't think, seem like it's going to work, right? If I try to u sub, the only real kind of plausible choice would be letting u equal natural log of x, but my du would be one over x dx, and I really don't have that. So this is leading me to think, well, this mixture probably isn't going to be good for substitution. So then I should try integration by parts. But I really, 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 really want to stress, you should always be thinking, can I do a U sub first? If I can't, then let's try integration by parts. So here we're going to let U equal, good question. What am I going to let U equal? Am I going to let it equal the X squared? Am I going to let it equal the natural log of X? So that one more time? None of them. Well, I have to pick one of them. Well, it's gonna work. So here's the thing. I have to pick a U and a DV. They both, both of them are pretty, pretty easy to differentiate and they both get simpler. Natural log of X. Right, but the reason I wanna pick U equal to natural log of X is because I don't wanna pick DV equal to natural log of X. We actually don't yet know what the antiderivative of natural log of X is. And even if we did, it's fairly complicated. So we definitely wanna pick U equal to the natural log of X here and dv is going to have to be the rest. 
So definitely worth mentioning. Once you pick U, your DV is decided. I picked U equal to the natural log of X. DV has to be everything else. The X squared times the DX. The derivative of the natural log of X is one over X DX. The antiderivative of X squared is X cubed over three. Fun fact, if you're doing integration by parts and there's a logarithm, the, the U is always going to be equal to the logarithm. So whenever you have a logarithm and you think integration by parts, that's always what your U is going to be. And there's actually a little kind of pattern we'll talk about in a second for how to decide what U is going to be. Um, so rewriting my integral, x squared times natural log of x dx, we're going to get U times V, so natural log of x times x cubed over 3, minus the integral of V du. As a reminder, this is our u times our v minus the integral of our v times our du. It's the whole formula. And then, so here's where people, I've seen people make this mistake too many times to not address it. We get natural log of x times x cubed over 3. And then to anti differentiate this, we need to simplify it. Right, this x cubed over three times one over x, we can cancel an x. And that's gonna be the minus one third the integral of x squared. We can't just anti-differentiate each factor there and multiply it together. We have to, have to, have to simplify it first. And then it's relatively straightforward. We get natural log of x times x cubed over three minus one third times the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over three. And then we slap on a plus c. And then you could leave it like that, or maybe simplify it as natural log of x times x cubed over three minus x cubed over nine. That's it. Yeah. Let's do, we'll do two more, and then we will talk about kind of a general way people talk about how to pick u. So let's look at the integral of x times cosine of 5x squared. So what should I try first? I just definitely try a u sub first. So let's see. If I do a u sub, what's a good choice for you? Definitely. u equals 5x squared. It looks like my du is going to be 10x dx, so one-tenth du is equal to x dx. And I definitely have an x dx. So this is going to be rewritten as the integral of let's see, x dx is one-tenth du. And then I have cosine of u. The antiderivative of cosine of u is sine of u. Let's see, and then we throw back in the u, which is going to be one tenth sine of five x squared. Okay, versus let's say we had almost the same problem: the integral of x times cosine of five x. It's just different enough. So again, both of these are what I call mixtures. I have a power of x times a trig function. I have a power of x times a trig function. But in this problem, u sub isn't going to work out. We need to do an integration by parts. So here we're going to pick. What should I pick u equal to? I think so. Well, let's think. Let's talk about it. So if I pick u equal to x, the derivative is one, which is simple. If I pick u equal to cosine, the derivative is negative sine, which is the same amount of complexity, right? Cosine and sine are essentially. I mean, they're virtually the same function, really, but they didn't get really simpler. Versus if I had picked, right, where is it? If I had picked dv equal to cosine, the antiderivative is sine, so it's relatively easy to anti differentiate. So you're definitely right. We should pick u equal to x, and our dv has to be the rest, which is cosine of 5x dx. Our du is 1 times dx, and our v, which is the antiderivative of cosine of 5x is sine of 5x divided by 5. This is where those mini u substitutions are coming into play, right? I don't want to have to do a u sub to integrate cosine of 5x. I just need to know it's the, the antiderivative of sine of 5x divided by 5. 
So then this is going to equal u times v. So x times sine of 5x over 5 minus the integral of v du. So sine of 5x 5 dx. And then that's not too terrible. This you so you could leave this like this, or you could write it as one fraction. It really doesn't matter. X times sine of five x all over five, and then the integral of sine x is cosine. negative cosine. negative cosine. So since I have a negative here, I'm going to get negative negative cosine. So I'm going to get positive cosine of five x divided by well, the integral of sine of 5x is going to be negative cosine of 5x divided by another 5. So I'm going to have an overall denominator of 25. So it's 5 times 5. Okay. Let's look at one or two more examples and then we will say some things. What if I had the integral of x squared times the square root of x minus 3. Is this a mixture problem? Do I have, do I have more than one kind of type of, I, that's not a great question, but I'll still ask it. Is it a mixture problem? I would say no. I mean, I can see how you might say yes, because you have like a power of x times the square root of x squared x minus three, but the square root of x minus three is also kind of like a power of x. So really, we kind of just have powers of x here. We don't have another exponential or logarithmic or trig function. So this is, in my, in my opinion, and you could, you, someone could make a convincing argument that maybe this is, is mixture, but as far as we're concerned, not a mixture. So we're not even going to, so I say integration by parts is off the table. Shouldn't even consider it. So instead, the only thing I've really got left after any of square parts for now is u substitution. So we're going to do u equal to x minus 3. Your du is equal to 1 times dx. And then this requires a back substitution. So we're going to, because right, because there's a leftover x squared. So I could rewrite this as the integral of x squared times the square root of u du. But then I have to deal with the x squared. So, oh, u equals x minus 3, u plus 3 equals x. So that is going to get substituted in for x there. And we're going to get the integral of u plus 3 squared times the square root of u. And then we multiply it out, and we get the integral of u squared plus 6u plus 9, all times u to the 1 half. And then we distribute that to each term. So we get u to the 5 halves plus 6 u to the 3 halves plus 9 u to the 1 half. And now we're finally able to enter differentiate. And we're going to get u to the 5 halves plus 1 is 7 halves times 2 sevenths plus 6 times u to the 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves times 2 fifths plus 9 times u to the 3 halves times two thirds plus C. And then we plug back in what U is equal to. U is equal to X minus three. So we're gonna get two sevenths times X minus three to the seven halves plus 12 fifths times X minus three to the five halves plus nine times two thirds is gonna be six times X minus three to the three halves. Kind of a pain but not so awful. Okay. So when I'm thinking integration by parts, generally I'm thinking of the following thing. So for integration by parts, the way we pick U is with the following acronym late. And if you're taking the 21 series, it's lie eight because there's an extra type of function we worry about, but we're not worrying about that because it's 16b. So first, 
if you see a logarithmic function, that's what you're going to pick you to. Hands down every time. It, I should say, if you've determined we should be doing integration points, right? There's definitely some problems where logarithms show up where it's a U substitution. What if it's like natural log multiplied by X? Mm, like, do you mean natural log of X multiplied by X? Yeah. So, like, so do you mean this? Or do you mean this? No, I mean the first one. Sure. Both of these are integration by parts, and both of them you do let u equal the natural log of x. And then in this one, your dv would be x dx. And in this one, your dv would be just dx. And we'll actually do both of these problems in a second. So next. If you don't have a logarithm, then you pick u to be any power of x. Like we have in a lot of these previous problems, right? In this problem here, we had x times cosine of 5x, and we let u equal x to the first. Or in this previous problem here, oh no, this problem is, this is the problem with x squared natural log of x, and we let u equal the natural log of x. And then lastly, so I should say these last two actually kind of either either way, but if you don't have a log and you don't have a power of x, then you let u equal your trig thing. And rarely, rarely, rarely do you ever let u equal an exponential thing like e to the x. So if you see a log, that's your u. If you don't see a log and you see a power of x, that's your u. If you see a trig and an exponential, it's a little dicey, but usually your triggers are you. Right. Yes. So just so just like in this problem here, where you have a u equal x to the first, or sorry, where you have x to the first times natural log of x, you're definitely going to pick u equal to the natural log of x, and then dv has to be the rest. So whichever one you see first, that's what you should pick for u, and then the rest of it's just dv. With rare, so I will say there are some rare exceptions to this, but but they're very. They're, I think I have. Let me see, let me double check. I think I have one example. Yeah, there's a bonkers problem from section six point two that we'll look at here, which kind of breaks the rule. So, but for the most part, this is this holds true. So in this problem here, if I let u equal natural log of x, my dv is x dx. This problem actually is very similar to the x squared times natural log of x problem. So if we do this our du is one over x and our v, sorry, one over x dx and our v is x squared over two. It is a good idea to write the dx's. I know can, people sometimes kind of drop those, but I encourage you to write them. So our integral of x times natural log of x dx is gonna equal, I'm actually gonna write it out this time just remember, remind me what it is. It's gonna be uv minus the integral of v du which is let's well, see u times v, so the natural log of x times x squared over two minus the integral of v times du x squared over two times one over x dx. And just like every other time, if you can simplify this new integral, you should. Um, the whole point of this process is to get a new integral that is easier to deal with every time. So. I have the natural log of x times x squared over 2 minus the integral of x squared over x. I can cancel on x and I just have x over 2. So I'm going to end up getting, you could rewrite this as one fraction if you want, x squared times natural log of x all over 2 minus x squared over 2 times 2. We'll see. So when I integrate x over two, I'm really ignoring the two in the denominator. What's the antiderivative of x? Right, and so then if I'm dividing by another two, I have x squared over two times two. I could have written a little more and factored out the one half, and then I would said, I could have said I have one half times x squared over two, but I didn't. This integral does come up, and this is one people often put on tests and usually cover in class at some point. But if you're trying to integrate the natural log of x 
first of all, I will strongly remind you the derivative of natural log of x is one over x. The antiderivative of natural log of x is definitely not one over x. So don't get confused. I've seen many students say, oh, it's just one over x. It's definitely not one over x. So let's find out what it is. I'm going to do integration by parts. And yes, you can pick u to be the entire integrand, and then your dv can be just dx. It's totally a valid choice. If you prefer, you can write dv equals 1 times dx, if that makes you feel better. And then we're going to find the usual things. du, well, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x dx. And the antiderivative of 1 is just x. And then we're going to throw it all into the formula. The integral of the natural log of x dx is equal to u times v, so x times natural log of x, minus the integral of v du, x times 1 over x dx. And then we're going to simplify this thing just like we have every time we can. This is going to equal x times natural log of x minus the integral of 1. And then the antiderivative of 1 is just x. So there's your antiderivative of the natural log of x. It is x times natural log of x minus x plus c. So times. Yeah, all right. They get harder. They get to have more steps like this next one. Um, and I definitely do. So there is a shortcut for problems like these next two, which I will show you. But as with many mathematical things, we like to show you the long way to do it. So then you really appreciate how great it is to do it the short way. Also, this thing is something your teacher might not show you because not everyone teaches this. It's, it's a shortcut, but it's not in the book. So I'll show it to you. I encourage you to Use it if you're allowed. You should not be allowed to, but some people are picky about things. So let's talk about doing the integral of x squared times sine of 3x. So I see any power of x, and I also see a trig thing. So if I'm using my way of deciding, I'm going to let u equal the any power of x. Um, I suppose I should have said, I should have thought, could I do u substitution here? And then been like, no, I can't do u substitution here. It's not a good choice for you. So in relation to my parts, we're going to let u equal x squared. And then as soon as I've decided u, everything else is decided for me. dv has to be the rest. So dv is sine of 3x times dx. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Our du is going to be 2x dx. And our V is going to be the antiderivative of sine of 3x, which is negative cosine of 3x divided by 3. And then we're going to throw it all into the formula. So the integral of x squared times sine of 3x dx is going to equal u times V. So that's going to be x squared times negative cosine of 3x over 3 minus the integral of v du, which is negative cosine of 3x divided by 3 times 2x dx, which looks not lovely. So let's do a little bit of adjusting before we move on. So first of all, I'm going to write this as one fraction. Let's write it as negative x squared times cosine of 3x over 3. That's not really the important part, though. Let's do a little bit of simplifying here. So first of all, a minus a minus is going to be a plus, and that two thirds can come out in front. But then I still have an x times a cosine of 3x. And you might notice this looks a lot like what we started with, except the power got less. So here's kind of that idea, again, of why you're picking u to be x squared in this case in the first one because your new integral is simpler right the power of x decreased by one and the trig function didn't really change right it's still the same type of trig function so we're going to do the same thing again meaning we're going to do another u substitute uh, sorry another integration by parts we're going to now 
let u equal x and du equal one times dx. And your dv is gonna have to be cosine of three x and your v is gonna be sine of three x divided by three. So this is definitely a problem where we have to do any, whoops, where'd that go? Sorry, sorry, my, okay, there you are. Where we have to do integration by parts twice. So let's do it. Now we're gonna get, so this is gonna become negative x squared cosine of three x over three plus, now here's where you need to be paying extra careful attention. That two thirds is gonna multiply the entire integral. And that integral is equal to all of uv minus the integral of e to u. In fact, let's write it out the long way. Right, that's what that integral is equal to. So this two thirds is gonna multiply all of that. So we're gonna get negative x squared cosine of three x three plus two thirds times uv, so that's gonna be an x times sine of three x over three, minus the integral of v du, which is sine of three x over three dx. Lovely. Okay, let's do a little bit of simplifying. I'm gonna have my negative x squared cosine of three x three, I'm going to distribute this two thirds to each of these terms. So two thirds times x times sine three x over three is going to be a two x sine of three x on top and a three times three on the bottom. And then the two thirds times this integral, well, let's say I have a two thirds times a one third. So that's going to be a minus two ninths and I still have the integral of sine of three X. Finally, I'm gonna have minus X squared cosine of three X over three plus, I might write this as two ninths X times sine of three X. Again, it really doesn't matter. And then finally, the integral of sine of three X is going to be a negative. So since it's gonna be a negative, let's just change that negative to a positive cosine of three X over three. And yeah, I should probably do one more sim simplification here, but I really don't wanna write this out again. So I think we can see that that's, you could write that as two cosine three X over 27. It's kind of a big pain in the butt, right? I mean, integration by parts repeated is gets messy. Let's do another one. And then we'll talk about how there is a shorter way of doing this. Again, I should say, there's a shorter way of doing this, but it's very specific. So there are some problems where that require repeated integration by parts where you can use the shortcut that I'm alluding to. There are other problems where you really, really can't. So, yeah. Now let's look at this one. This one, so this one is gonna require integration by parts three whole times. It's really, really, really fun. Let's look at the integral of x cubed times e to the negative x dx. So let's do it the first time. We're gonna let u equal x cubed and our dv is e to the negative x dx. And then our du of course is three x squared dx. And our v is the antiderivative e to the negative x is what? Right, which is the same as its derivative, right? Which is kind of funky because you're dividing by the negative one, but it happens to be the same. So this is gonna be negative e to the negative x. Yes. All right, so this is gonna equal our uv minus the integral of v du, which is gonna be where? Oh, you're right, I, that's a mistake. Good, good catch, yeah, sorry. Sometimes you get so used to writing them all the places that you get. So you definitely, if you're writing a D something, it should be on both sides, All right? So here I have a DU and a DX. Here I have a DV and a DX, but you're definitely, yeah, 100%, we should not have had a DX there, thanks. Let's see, so I get UV of X cubed times, I'm gonna put the negative over here, negative E to the negative X minus the integral of VDU. 
So negative e to the negative x times 3x squared dx. I, so people make different choices here. I kind of like to pull out the three, but I'm actually going to not this time. So let's write this as negative x cubed e to the negative x plus the integral of 3x squared times e to the negative x. It's fine to pull out the three as a factor. It's also fine to not. Not pulling it out means you don't have to worry about distributing it later. So I think it might be worth not doing it. So now we're going to do integration by parts again. So now we're going to let u equal 3x squared. Our dv is once again. Oh, okay then. What the heck was that? Okay, bug, go away. <laughs> yeah, beat it. All right, went right in my nose. It was a little uh, surprising there. All right. So um, again, our dv is e to the negative x dx. Our du will be 6x dx. And our v will once again be negative e to the negative x. So then we're going to end up getting that this whole thing is equal to negative x cubed e to the negative x plus our new uv minus the integral of v du. So we're going to get plus uv, so 3x squared times negative e to the negative x minus the integral of v du, negative e to the negative x times 6x dx. Let's simplify a little bit. We get negative x cubed e to the negative x minus 3x squared e to the negative x minus minus is plus 6x e to the negative, the integral of 6x e to the negative x dx. All right, one more time. Now we're going to let u equal 6x. Our du is 6 dx. Our dv again is e to the negative x dx, and our v again is negative e to the negative x. So finally, we can say that this is equal to negative x cubed e to the negative x minus 3x squared e to the negative x plus uv, so 6x times negative e to the negative x minus the integral of v du, which is the integral of negative, sorry e to the negative x times 6 dx. So then finally, we get negative x cubed e to the negative x minus 3x squared e to the negative x minus 6x e to the negative x. And then this is plus 6 times the integral of e to the negative x. So it's going to be minus 6 e to the negative x plus c. Wow, that's a lot of writing. It's kind of gross. So let me show you a shorter way. Yeah. Um, where did that 3x squared Yeah, like on the left, on the left. Right, where left. Where did come from? Like the one on the left. This, this is which equation, I guess? This one. Where did that come So, so this, so, so, so this right here, so we're doing the integral of this, right? Yeah. And that's equal to all of that. So in this integral, there's my u and my dv. Yeah. And then the integral is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And that's exactly this. That's my uv minus the integral of v du. Yeah, but right, it's messy, right? There's a lot of things to keep track of here, right? It's, it, it would have been really easy to make a mistake, lose a negative sign, something to go wrong. So there is a abbreviated way of doing integrals of the three following types. So if you see an integral like this, the integral of x to a power times sine of some multiple of x. Or you see an integral like x to a power times cosine of some multiple of x. Or you see x to a power times e to some multiple of x. If you see one of these three types, I, I should say 
with the caveat that n is a positive integer. It has to be a positive integer. It will not work if it's a negative integer or a fractional power. So here's why, so here's why n has to be a positive integer. The reason is because eventually if you keep taking, we keep taking derivatives of x to the n, eventually we will get zero. Right, because if you take the derivative of x to the fifth, the derivative is five x to the fourth, and then 20 x cubed, and then something x squared, and then something x, and then something, and then zero. But that is only true if your function is x to a positive integer power. So if you have one of these three situations, you can do the following type of thing. In fact, let's go back and look at our first example, which was the, let me go back and see what it was, which was x squared times sine of 3x. So for the integral of x squared times sine of 3x dx, which I really, oh man, the answer is gross. So here's what we do. We're going to say, well, what would our u equal? Same choice as before, right? Our u would be x squared. And then our dv would be sine of 3x. And I'm not going to write the dx part because I, I, we don't typically do it. So then in the u column, we're going to take all the derivatives until we get to zero. So take the derivatives, differentiate. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of 2 is 0. In the other column, we're going to do the antiderivatives. So the antiderivative of sine of 3x is negative cosine of 3x divided by 3. And the antiderivative of negative cosine of 3x divided by 3 is negative sine of 3x divided by 3 times 3. And the antiderivative of negative sine of 3x over 9 is positive cosine of 3x divided by 27. And we go down to the same, the same number of rows. Right? So you go down until you match the zero there. And then here's how we do it. I have a green pen here. Yes, I do. Good. So we take the product of these and we add the product of those. And then we subtract the product of those, and then we add the product of those. And we keep going back and forth between adding and subtracting. So check this out. The answer here, the answer to the integral of x squared times sine of 3x dx is exactly plus, I'm not going to write the plus, x squared times negative cosine of 3x over 3 minus 2x times negative sine of 3x over 9 plus 2 times cosine of 3x over 27. Let's see. Let's go back and look. Is that the same as what we got before? Let's see. We have negative x squared times cosine three x over three. That's the same as that. We have positive two ninths x times sine of three x. Yeah, that works. And we have two over 27 times cosine of three x. Totally the same. Kind of great. So this method is called, this is called tabular integration because you're using a table. And I will remind you, it only ever works for these three types of integrals. You have to have integrals where x is raised to a positive integer power, so its derivative is eventually zero. And the dv part has to be something that's cyclic, right? Because if you take the antiderivative of sine, you get negative cosine. And the antiderivative of negative cosine is negative sine, and then positive cosine, right? It just keeps cycling back through the same four functions. The same is true with cosine. The same is true with e to the x. The antiderivatives just keep cycling through the same things. Other functions, this will not work for.
I've definitely tried it for like a natural log of X. I thought it was going to work, but no, definitely doesn't work. So I promise you it won't work for other things. Sure. So let, let's actually, let's do the other example and then we'll kind of revisit the whole thing. So, so let's look at the e to the x one as well. So we were just doing the integral of x cubed e to the negative x. So for the integral of x cubed e to the negative x, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to let u be x cubed, and then we're going to find all the derivatives. 3x squared, 6x, 6, 0. And then for dv, we're going to let dv be the e to the negative x. And then we're going to take all the antiderivatives, which is going to be negative e to the negative x, positive e to the negative x, negative e to the negative x, positive e to the negative x. I want to really, really stress here, right? The left, the u's we are differentiating, the dv's. Now I should point out, even though the Technically, these are also the derivatives because of the way e to the negative x work. We are taking the antiderivatives this way. And now, here's the, here's the answer to your question, Devin. We are multiplying down di across diagonals. So we're multiplying x cubed times negative e to the x. And we're writing a plus sign here to remind us to keep the sign the same. So what we're going to get is we're going to get the, this integral of x cubed e to the negative x dx is equal to plus that times that x cubed times negative e to the negative x and then we switch and we get minus that times that 3x squared times e to the negative x exactly yes but i'm also still paying attention to the sign that's there so yeah, so this time I'm going to get plus that times that. And then I'm going to get minus that times that. Plus C. And then if we write it out, each term ends up being negative in this particular example. We get negative x cubed e to the negative x minus 3x squared e to the negative x minus 6x e to the negative x minus 6 e to the negative x plus c which is exactly the same as the answer we got doing it the other way but we didn't have to do yeah right we didn't do integration by parts three whole times so this is something that i think is worthwhile your teacher might not agree, I guess, but I would certainly say that this is something you can and should use when it's applicable. Any questions in the chat? Well, let's see here. Okay. So, time is it? Okay. Let's go ahead and look at a couple more examples because there are a few other oddities that come up. Actually, before we do a couple of more examples, I'm gonna let you all try one of these on your own. So I would love for you all to try to do this one. Let's try the integral of x cubed times cosine of x dx. Yes. Would it work if you had That would work. Yeah, that's a good point. I like, yeah, in fact, I like your style, Devin. Let's try that instead. Let's try the integral of x cubed times cosine of 3x plus 2. The one thing I'll say about this method, just from a writing it down perspective, is Give yourself plenty of room because when you find the antiderivative of cosine of 3x plus 2, it's going to be sine of 3x plus 2 divided by 3. So just give your give each row kind of space so that things don't get too cramped because that was always a mistake I would make doing. So all right, I'm gonna let you guys work on this one.
segment of 30 seconds. Plus, right? What's that? Yeah, you always start with plus. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So the antiderivative of cosine of 3x plus 2 is sine of 3x plus 2 over 3. The antiderivative of sine of 3x plus 2 is going to be negative cosine of 3x plus 2 over another multiple of 3. And then the antiderivative of that is going to be negative sine of 3x plus 2 divided by another multiple of 3. And the antiderivative of that is going to be positive cosine of 3x plus 2 divided by another multiple of 3. So it's always kind of a little bit dicey, but it's not too, too bad. Um, do be careful with sine and cosine, but you're taking the antiderivatives. So the plus or minus is kind of the opposite direction as it would be for the derivative. So just make sure you're careful. And then we're gonna have plus, minus, plus, minus. So our answer here is going to be that the integral of x cubed times cosine of three x plus two dx is equal to x cubed times sine of 3x plus 2 over 3. And then minus a minus, so it's going to be plus. You could start simplifying along the way, right? I know that 3x squared over 9, the 3s are going to cancel. I'm going to get an x squared times cosine of 3x plus 2 over 3, because the 3 over 9 is reduced to 1 third. And then I'm going to get a minus. I'm going to run out of room. I'm going to get minus 6 over 27 reduces to 2 ninths. So I'm going to get 2x sine of 3x plus 2 over 9. And then I'm going to get a minus 6 over 81 reduces to 2 over 27. So 2 cosine of 3x plus 2 over 27. So. I reduced along the way. Yeah, it's certainly better than doing integration by parts three times. But again, it's only applicable in these sorts of cases. Yeah, good, good question. I like good question. Um, okay, let's look at another thing that will definitely, I'm, I'm almost certain. Yeah, there's definitely this problem is in your homework assignments for sure, or problem like this. Let's look at the integral of e to the 2x times sine of x. So, Technically, for this problem, you can actually choose u and dv either way you want. You just have to be consistent. But the choice that I always make is to let u be the trigonometric thing and dv to be the exponential thing. So we're going to pick u equal to sine of x, dv is e to the 2x dx. Our du is going to be cosine of x dx. Their V is going to be e to the 2x divided by 2. So then we're going to get that this is equal to uv minus the integral of e du. So we're going to u times v, so it's going to be 1 half e to the 2x times sine of x minus the integral of v du, which is going to be 1 half e to the 2x times cosine of x. Um, so personally, I like to bring out the one half. So, so, and really I should stress, you can go either way here. So I should say, we're going to do integration by parts again. Some people would prefer to say that the DV is one half e to the two X and the U is cosine X. Some people would prefer to bring the one half out and then the it later. Either way is fine. It just depends on what you like better. Um, but I'm actually going to go the way I don't usually go. So now here's where we have to be extra, extra careful. 
when you're doing linear shepherd the second time in this context, you have to make sure you choose things the same sort of way. Meaning if you chose u to be the trig thing in this first one, you have to make the same choice and let u be the trig thing in this one. If you, if you make the opposite choice, what will end up happening is you'll end up getting that the integral of e to the 2x times sine of x is equal to the integral of e to the 2x times sine of x, which is true, but not helpful at all because you're just going to get back to where you started. So literally, you, you will have undone the work you already did. It's kind of, it's kind of silly. Um, so here, we're going to let u equal cosine of x. Our du is going to be negative sine of x dx. Our dv is going to be 1 half e to the 2x dx. And our v is going to be 1 fourth e to the 2x. And so I'm going to write this out kind of the long way because there's something I know that we need to do for this problem. So I'm going to say, okay, we've got the integral of e to the 2x sine of x dx, and it's equal to this. So 1 half e to the 2x times sine of x minus the whole integral here. So minus the whole uv minus the integral of v du. So minus uv cosine of x times one fourth e to the two x minus the integral of v du, one fourth e to the two x times a negative sine of x dx. And let's simplify this a little bit before we make a very important observation. So the integral of e to the two x sine of x dx equals one half e to the two x sine of x minus one fourth e to the two x cosine of x minus a minus a minus is minus one fourth the integral of e to the two x sine of x. And you want everyone to be super cool with that, right? I have, right, so this minus sign times this minus sign makes it a plus, but then I would distribute that minus sign over there and it gets to be a minus again. Okay, now here's the thing we have to see. We've got the same integral we started with. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it to both sides. I'm going to add a one fourth the integral of e to the two x sine of x over here. And I'm going to add a one fourth the integral of e to the two x sine of x over here. On the right hand side, they cancel out. And what, what is one times this integral plus one fourth times that integral? How much of that integral do I have? I have five fourths of it. Sometimes people do this thing where they say, this is, they, use, they call this like capital I, and then like I plus one fourth I is five fourths I. That's all. They just kind of it's a, safe, a space saving thing. But I really do want to know, right? We have one of these plus a quarter of these. So I have one and a quarter, which is five fourths of my integral. It's kind of, it feels kind of like cheating. Like it feels like a weird trick, but it's totally like we did integrate my parts, integrate my parts twice. And then we're just going to take this extra piece and add it back over here. So then five fourths of the integral is equal to one half e to the two x sine of x minus one fourth e to the two x times cosine of x. And I'm just going to multiply both sides by four fifths. So the integral of e to the two x times sine of x, dx is equal to four fifths times that. I'm actually going to multiply it. So four fifths times one half. It, ah, no, I should write it out. So four fifths times one half e to the two x sine of x minus one fourth e to the two x cosine of x. Let's see. That's our answer. It's kind of a trick, but it's something that you definitely will see in class. Um, so this is always the process. If you see e to the something, I should say, if you see like e to the 2x or e to the 3x or e to the x or e to a multiple of x times either sine or cosine of the multiple of x. So generally, I should say, let me just write it up here. Yeah. This is the process for the integral of 
e to a multiple of x times sine of a multiple of x or e to a multiple of x times cosine of a multiple of x. And yes, to answer the question that Devin asked before, you could totally make a, a bx plus c or an ax plus c, and you, could, and you could still do the same sort of process. Most of the time, people try not to make your lives suck that much, so they usually don't make it at like a 5x plus 4, but they could. Let's see, I had a couple more things. Yeah, we got, we got 10 minutes, all right. So, oh yeah, here's a bug's just flying at me over here. Okay, let's look at this next problem, which feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. The last question could be just like you that took a you got. No. It does not work. That's a, a really good question, and we, we would love for it to work. It doesn't work because the process, the problem is you, you have the never ending cycle of DUs, right? The, the DU never ends. Whereas with the trick we were using, the DU has to end at zero. So, so yeah, we, it's, a, it's a nice thought. We wish it could work, but it doesn't. So let's look at this next example, which is kind of super funky. The integral of the cosine of natural log of x dx. And there's actually, I think there's actually a couple of different ways you can attack this problem, but let's go with this. Um, I don't see a good choice. I don't see a u substitution, right? I could try letting u equal natural log, but then du is one over x. I don't have a one over x. Um, I, if I'm gonna try integration by parts, so if I'm gonna try integration by parts, what can I pick u equal to? There's only one choice. It's kind of a big choice. Cosine of natural log of x, right? We can't just, the cosine has the natural log of x in it. So we can't just not have the natural log of x. So, right, when you're doing integration of parts, essentially, you have to pick things that multiply by each other for your u and your dv. So the only things that are multiplied together here are cosine of natural log of x times dx, right? There isn't any other product there. So if we're gonna do integration by parts here, or if we're gonna attempt integration by parts, it's gonna be kind of weird, and we're gonna let u equal the entire cosine of natural log of x, and then the only thing left for dv is, what is going on with the honking out there? I feel like there was honking last week too, like around this time. Oh, well, that makes sense, okay. Uh, so then your du here, okay, so the derivative of cosine of natural log of x is going to be negative sine of your stuff times the derivative of your stuff, which is one over x. Times one over x or divided by x. And then your dv is dx, so your v is just x. So if we do this, we're gonna end up getting that it's equal to u times v, so x times cosine of natural log of x minus the integral of d du, which is negative sine of natural log of x over x times x. Oops, I forgot the dx there, sorry. Well, look at that. X is cancel. And now I've got x times cosine of natural log of x plus the integral of sine of natural log of x dx. And it kind of looks like I'm back where I started, except I have sine instead of cosine. But this definitely implies we're probably going to need to make the same choice, do integration by parts again, and we're probably going to end up back where we started with an integral of cosine of natural log of x. So let's see what happens. I'm going to let u equal sine of natural log of x and dv equal dx. Our du is cosine of natural log of x divided by x, right? Because it's cosine of natural log of x times 1 over x, dx, and our v is x. And look what we're going to get. This is going to equal x times cosine of natural log of x plus the integral of this, which is uv, x times sine of natural log of x 
minus the integral of v du, which is x times cosine of natural log of x over x dx. Let's cancel. So look where we've gotten to. We've gotten to that the integral of cosine of natural log of x is equal to x times cosine of natural log of x plus x times sine of natural log of x minus the integral of cosine of natural log of x. So then we do the same thing we did before. We add this over. So then we have two times the integral of cosine of natural log of x equal to the same stuff, x natural log of x plus x, sorry, x times cosine of natural log of x plus x times sine of natural log of x. And then finally, the integral we're actually trying to calculate is going to be that divided by 2. So x cosine of natural log of x plus x sine of natural log of x divided by 2 plus c. Kind of weird. So the thing to think about for these problems is if you don't know what to do, try something. Try u sub. If the u sub looks like it's not going to work, try integration by parts. Um, and that definitely goes to this last problem here. And I feel like next class we'll talk, we'll probably talk more about integration by parts. Sorry, we, so, and this, so definitely, would you mind if you have time to send me an email reminding me to, to find some questions about the, the, was it the income thing you asked about? Because if you don't, I'll probably forget to do it. But if you remind me, I will definitely do it next Thursday. Next class, we'll definitely talk more about integration by parts along with U substitution, because sometimes you have a combination of both things, as well as some integration by parts with definitely integrals. Let's look at one more example just to kind of point out that sometimes things are not what you think. So here's a terrible integral. This is section 6.2, number 28. The integral of x cubed e to the x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. Um, it's kind of a weird problem. And you might feel like there's a use sub here. There really isn't. What we end up doing here is we end up letting, making this choice, which seems very, very weird. Our u is going to be x squared e to the x squared. And our dv is going to be the rest. So I'm going to rewrite this as x times x squared e to the x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. So your dv is the rest, your x over x squared plus 1 squared. It's really kind of gross. Your du ends up being the derivative of this, which is 2x times e to the x squared plus x squared times e to the x squared times 2x dx. Well, that's terrible already. And your v ends up being the antiderivative of this, which is going to be 1 over x squared plus 1. Um, so plus 1 to the negative first. The derivative is negative second. So I think you need like a negative 1 half. And then you throw that all in. And when you integrate v times du, a lot of things cancel out just the right way. You should try this one on your own. It's kind of fun. <laughs>